coaching high school, that was one of the questions I asked. Basically, I said, when do we coach for development and when do we coach to win? And the coach that I asked said, when you let me know, fine, figure it out, uh, let me know. And I'm like, and to be honest, um, I coached the youngest ages all the way up to college. And if there's one thing that I have assessed of myself, especially over my last high school season, is that coaching at the youngest ages gives me this mentality of equal playing time. Um, and there was some games in high school that I probably should have not played as many minutes for other players as I should have, or made changes that I didn't need to make because I was trying to give playing time. Um, and so because of that, I feel like my next step should be to coach at a higher level so that I am more in a competitive kind of realm to make those tough calls. So that's kind of where I'm at in my own assessment of myself and my coaching. Mike, we just talked about before we hopped on, you're kind of the guru in Texas of U10 kind of gameplay. What is your thought process when it comes to play time for that age level? And then is there a part in your club where they transition where you start to look at, hey, we got to start playing the better players? Yeah, when you get up into the uh, older age groups, our 2006s, 2007s, 2008s, and you're playing for national titles, and national championships, there's going to be a true first group, right? And that that and we we do we have a true first group in those age groups that are going to get the majority of the minutes. That's um, that's that's just how it is. And um, you kind of you get yourself into a position to where you want to get more kids playing time, but at the same time. You also want them to feel that joy, all of them, of being a part of a championship and especially national championships and things like that, where, um, uh, you know, by the time they get off the podium, they, they forget about how many minutes they played and they were just a part of it. And that's with the older groups. With the younger groups, I wouldn't say I do. E I, I, I don't even do equal playing time. I say I do. Everybody gets half a game at least minimum. Right. Because I don't know how many subs I'm going to have. If you're in a seven V seven match and you have 12 subs, I mean, not 12 subs, but if you have 12 players on your team, that's five subs. And, and so versus, you know, if you have eight players on your team, so it's the, the amount of playing time is going to vary based on how many, but I, I guarantee all of my players half a game minimum. So, um, for me, that's that means everybody gets at least 25 minutes in a game because we play 25 minute half. So I'm trying to get everybody 25 minutes minimum playing time in a game. Um, so older age groups, high school and up, we we basically we're 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 trying we're trying to accomplish some things. We're trying to win there a lot. Uh, the teams have been narrowed down, um, and at our older age groups, we we mainly have one team in the age group. So. It's it's not like we've got we're not a, we're not what would be considered a mega club right and so we've only got the one team therefore everybody's getting a lot of playing time throughout the course of the season and whatnot anyway so and that's the other thing that you look at is it a league game right what's what's your positioning in it and and all of those other things so there's going to be times where you look at the schedule and go all right this week we're we've got a weaker opponent and you know, I can pretty much start any 11 and we're going to, we're going to dominate the match. So that's when you give a lot of minutes to the uh, kids who would normally maybe only get 10 to 15 minutes a half um, instead of the kids who play 40 minutes a half. Right. Um, with the younger kids, like I said, I don't really focus much on that with the younger kids. I'm rarely in a dominant situation because I'm always trying to play them in a hard spot. So every every one of my games with the younger kids is 2-1, 3-2, two, 2-0, two, two, you know, 1-3 to three type thing. So, um, yeah, it, high school is probably the age where I'd say, look, you're trying to get some things done there. And we're, we're looking to be successful. Plus, those coaches usually have – uh, their job is on the line for stuff like that usually. Right. So 
Um, especially if you start high school coaches or even uh, college coaches, their, their job's kind of on the line. The success matters for them. Uh, I, I'll yeah. add a couple things um, to that. So I was blessed to work at AKA three mega clubs um, and be the coaching director for two of them. And uh, the girls Academy or sorry, development Academy and as ECNL, I'd almost start by, especially if you're an individual coach or young or whatever, reverse engineer the question. So you can rely on the, the club's policy. So start with what does the club want? And then if something's ever in question, you can say, well, the coaching director wrote it. This, like, this is our policy, and I'm, I'm going by that. Uh, the way I did it when I was in – I had a development academy team that was very, very talented. Uh, we lost in the lead eight to the good solar team, and the year before they lost in the national championship game. Um, but what we did, or what I did especially, was – I said the only game we will even mention the word winning is when we got to nationals. And they were 0203s at the time. So 16s, 17s, Development Academy. We had three national uh, team players on the team, our pool players. And like I got slack for losing a local game to a local club and, and whatever. But I was confident in the way we were building them. We would win enough games. That would put us in a situation. And then when we went to Nationals, and I had people upset because they didn't play in a couple of games. But I was very clear in August at tryouts or July in tryouts, this is how we are going to approach it, is we're going to play football. Yes, there's kids who are going to play more. You're all going to play. Uh, as long as you're doing the minimal standards, are you at training, you know, the little stuff. But we aren't mentioning winning not even at the showcases, till we get to nationals. And then when we get to nationals, it's all about winning. And we're going to develop you, and our team was high school age, develop the mentality of, okay, there are times where you have to just go do things that, that help your team win. So that, that's my philosophy. At the, so, at the younger age group, I was going to say, at the younger age groups, I don't even, if I win too much, it's a problem. Right. That I even look at it like that. If I'm out there and I'm winning 30 games in a row, I don't have them in a challenging enough spot is 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 my problem. So I'm using the games as a development tool. Like I'm, I'm U10, U9, U8. I, I shouldn't be out there winning a bunch of games and winning a bunch of blowouts. I should I should have my team in an appropriate place where I'm probably going to win half my games, lose half my games. And if I've got them in a good spot, those games are going to be relatively close. So we want the games to be challenging. We want we want it to be hard. That's how you develop grit. If you just give them everything, if you put them in an easy spot, you're just you're not the kids aren't going to have they're not going to know how to fight. They're not going to know how to come back. They're not going to know how the struggle. So I mean, part of developing, you know, that heart, that fight, that grit is is putting them in positions where it's going to be hard and they're going to lose some games when you're doing that. Katie, what was the impetus for this question? Like what's kind of the, was that helpful or what things were you looking for? One of the things that I've always believed is middle school is that point where you transition, right? It's to prepare them for high school. It's to prepare them for now we're moving into that next step where not everyone's going to play the same. And I think we all agree that, yes, there are games where kids can get more minutes than others. And, yes, when you can give kids minutes, you should, right? But I think the, the real crux of the question is when you've got a situation like exactly what Mike's saying. You're putting them in situations where we're playing difficult competition. We're playing competition that we're not just going to run through, right? Because that doesn't make us better. So everyone we're playing is the same level, if not a little bit better, maybe a little bit below us. So how do we balance? Like, yes, you need to get minutes and you need to develop. But at the same time, like, like we all said, I mean, a lot of people, they want to win. You get to middle school, like parents want to win. And when you don't, they get irritated, right? And especially if they feel like, like, that you're losing because certain kids are playing and maybe they shouldn't be. And I think Kai made a good point that we can look on the philosophy of the club, but I think the reality is for, and that maybe is a whole other conversation, but a lot of clubs or at least clubs that I have personally been a part of, it's like, Hey, it's your team, do what you want. And there's really no philosophy in terms of 
playing time, whatever, when you get middle school, high school. Now, the younger kids, absolutely. It's like you need to rotate. They all need to play half a game or try, you know, equal minutes or whatever. But when you get older, it's kind of like you're the coach, do what you want. So when you don't have that philosophy to rely back on and you don't have that ability to necessarily play teams that you can give a ton of minutes to kids that maybe wouldn't because you're trying to put them in difficult situations to make them better, how do you start to balance that? 